Joe Alden, MD of Survival Top 50's Reader's Choice website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, The Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its 700-page third edition, the brand new bestseller, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in Austere Settings, and the designers of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Some years ago, I began writing about medical preparedness for disasters that may take away modern medicine for the foreseeable future. In those circumstances, it stands to reason that a big issue is going to be infection caused by bad water, improperly prepared food, and injuries from the activities of daily survival. These infections, left untreated, may cause deaths that would otherwise be preventable if there were access to antibiotics. I've written a number of articles on this subject over time, culminating in our latest book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease. And this book discusses how to recognize infectious disease without high technology and also discusses your treatment options using only the antibiotics currently available online without a medical license in avian and aquatic form. Admittedly, a controversial topic, but one that would save lives if you were thrown off the grid by a long-term disaster. One question I often get from members of the preparedness community is, how much of a supply of antibiotics do I need? Well, this question vexes me. It frosts my cookies because it is extraordinarily difficult to answer. I could simply say 20, 50, 100, 1,000 doses of a particular antibiotic, but one size does not fit all. There are a number of factors that the medic for each family or survival group must take into account. First, what happened? What disaster took away modern medicine and made you the medic? Well, in terms of the antibiotics you'll need, the aftermath of a storm is very different from, say, a major bacterial epidemic. This is not to say that a non-disease event can't cause an epidemic. In Haiti, an earthquake caused so much damage to the infrastructure that a cholera outbreak ensued. If you're worried about the occasional wound infection, though, the amount of antibiotics you'll need is less than if every member of your family, maybe your whole neighborhood, has gotten infected. Next, how long will it take for modern medicine to make a comeback? If the disaster in question is a hurricane that knocks out the power for a week, let's say a few days, the likelihood is you won't require a huge supply of antibiotics. As a matter of fact, a number of infections, like uh, the intestinal inflammation caused by Giardia, for example, may take longer than a week to even begin to show symptoms. If the disaster is an EMP, however, from a nuclear explosion 200 miles over the Midwest, you might be off the grid for decades. Another important factor to consider is how many people are you responsible for? Unless you're a jack of all trades, you're going to need people with other skills to increase your chances for survival. These people have the same possibility of getting an infection as those for whom you originally planned. That places an additional burden on a limited supply of antibiotics. Who are you taking care of? Now, even the healthiest, most robust young adult can become ill with an infection, certainly, but those with weakened or undeveloped immune systems are most at risk for a bad outcome. If your survival group is heavy with young children, elderly folks, the chronically ill, well, you're going to be more likely to expend your antibiotics and should have a pretty significant supply. Consider this. What's the environment like? Air, water, food. Poor quality or contamination of any of these can cause your risk of infection to rise significantly, and thus your requirement for more antibiotics. The terrain may be problematic if steep and rugged, causing injuries that may become infected. Extremes of temperature can weaken individuals, predisposing them, again, to infection. What medical supplies does the rest of your group have? Are you the designated medic for an extended family, group, or community? If so, are you the only one charged with the responsibility to accumulate items for medical storage? A group that has multiple people working to obtain antibiotics and other various medical supplies puts less burden on the medic. And last but not least, how good is the medic? 
A recent survey showed that a significant number of patients who came to their doctors with respiratory infections, including influenza, left the office with a prescription for antibiotics. Giving antibiotics for viral infections does absolutely nothing to cure them. The medic has to have the ability to recognize bacterial versus viral infections, something we describe in our book, by the way. Uh, otherwise, important medicines are going to be wasted on those people that wouldn't actually benefit from them. You're going to need a lot of antibiotics if you use them like candy. Another sign of a good medic is assuring proper sanitation and hygiene. If the medic allows the latrine to be built right next to the local water source, well, contamination and disease will surely follow. The medic who doesn't supervise the purification of water, the preparation of food, things like that, they're risking their family's health. And so will the medic who doesn't insist that workers use proper personal protection like work gloves and eyewear. The, this medic is going to have to deal with a lot more injuries that can become infected. The bottom line, it's clear that no simple answer exists as to how many antibiotics are needed in a major disaster scenario. Examine your family or your group's individual needs and make sure to have extra for others in need who arrive at your doorstep. You can never have enough medical supplies. Consider those extras as barter items or better yet, as tools to help you save members of your community. You'll become known in the area as a healer who uses medical skills and supplies to save lives. Over time, your community will find you so valuable that they'll expend resources to protect you and your family. In a future video, I'll discuss the most important antibiotics that are available online, that is, to have in your medical storage. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. And so will the medic who doesn't insist that workers use proper personal protection like work gloves and eyewear. The, this medic is going to have to deal with a lot more injuries that can become infected. The bottom line, it's clear that no simple answer exists as to how many antibiotics are needed in a major disaster scenario. Examine your family or your group's individual needs and make sure to have extra for others in need who arrive at your doorstep. You can never have enough medical supplies. Consider those extras as barter items or better yet, as tools to help you save members of your community. You'll become known in the area as a healer who uses medical skills and supplies to save lives. Over time, your community will find you so valuable that they'll expend resources to protect you and your family. In a future video, I'll discuss the most important antibiotics that are available online, that is, to have in your medical storage. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to fill those holes in your medical storage by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.